Alright guys, this is the Swiss Model 1911 Longuevere rifle in 75 by 55 Swiss. In this video we're going to go through and I'm going to take apart these two bolts here from my two different rifles, this rifle and the other one that I have up on my wall. And we're going to take them apart and we're going to measure them for accuracy. See what kind of accuracy they were able to attain. attain. This bolt goes to this gun and this gun will be turning a hundred in July of this year. So this bolt is a hundred years old and this bolt was made in 1916. So we're going to go through and see what kind of accuracy they were able to attain in manufacturing these parts using nothing but hand tools. Because these were made long before any kind of fancy machining. These were hand machined and hand filed down by master craftsmen who learned the art from their father, who learned it from their father, so on and so on. So we're going to just go through and see, doing it that way, what kind of accuracy they were able to attain. So we're going to start out by taking the bolt apart. And I'll go over the basic parts of the bolt with you. You have the rear bolt group here that basically holds everything together. This is this part. This is the charging handle. This is the bolt sleeve, a lot of people call it the cam, with, it has the locking lugs on it, and then this is the main bolt body, and we'll go over these parts again once I have this apart. So to turn your safety on, this is your safety, you pull out and you put it in the safe position. Now the spring is locked to where the firing pin won't fire. To take the bolt apart, you rest it between the two so it relieves all the tension from the parts. You move the cam slightly and you push the charging handle forward and it comes off. Then it's a simple matter of unscrewing the main bolt body, taking that off, removing the cam, and then you have this, this is the main firing pin, take the tension off the spring, hold the spring, the firing pin comes off, the spring and it's apart. The only bolt action that I know of that you can completely take apart with no hand tools, no stock washer like the Mauser requires or anything like that. So let's go through and I'll show you this is the firing pin spring. This is the firing pin. You can see there it's marked with a cursive D. This is the cam with the locking lugs you can see how big these lugs are and look at the surfaces of the lugs how high quality those surfaces are this is the main bolt body some people call it the bolt nose the extractor is really easy to take off I'm not going to do it right now because you, it, you have to kind of finagle with it it doesn't come off I shouldn't say easy it's you know easy to do but it does take some time basically if you can see this I don't know if you can or not there's a small groove right here you take a screwdriver and lift up here and here to get the the actual extractor over the lip of the bolt here and you just kind of lift up and twist and it slides out of its grooves so that's pretty easy to do but we're not going to do it here alright so we're gonna go through this again in case any of you missed it Put it between safety and fire to take all the tension off the spring. Push the charging handle forward. It comes away. Unscrew the body of the bolt. It falls out. Relieve the tension. Remove the firing pin, firing pin spring. Apart. Alright, let's go through and measure this out and see what we can come up with. Let's measure the safety selector switches first. We'll move everything to inches and we'll set our scale to zero so we can be accurate. Alright, we'll start up here with this one. We'll take two measurements on it. 0 0.350 0 0.350 perfect at the top and the bottom. Now let's look at this one's. 
0 0.350.5 0.350 0 0.350 now let's move to the firing pins at the top 0.1995 at the bottom Oop, excuse me 0.197 so there is a little bit of fluctuation there 0.1 yep there's definitely a lot slight fluctuation there in that part. Let's look at this one. 0 0.197 0 0.195 0 0.195 0 0.1965 so 0.197 so slight fluctuations in the firing pins. Let's look at the cams. Let's measure the inside diameter. Make sure we're getting this perfect. Appears to be 0.67 Oop. Trying not to get this too tight is difficult about 0 0.671, 0 0.670. About the same on that side. Now let's look at this one. Let's go back to zero, make sure we're still accurate. We are. 0 0.670. 0 0.67. Oop, my bad. Well, let's go back to zero and make sure we're accurate. Now we need to reset. All right. Point six seven one. All right. Let's measure the thickness of the steel. Since this is a critical part. Point. One one six point one one seven point one one eight point one one six Let's see what else. Ha Let's measure the bolt faces. Let's go back to zero, make sure we're still accurate. Okay, we are. Let's make sure I'm on the right place on the bolt face. Point four zero zero. Sliding off. Point four zero one. All right. Let's measure the inside diameter. Still accurate. Point five ten. Point five ten. All right, now just for the heck of it, let's see these measurements. I won't be able to get an accurate reading because it's flat on the bottom and round on the top. But let's just measure. This is a non-critical part, but let's just measure this part just for the heck of it. Oh, it's tapered, so. I'll just measure it right at the handle so that we can get a semi-accurate reading. 0.183 and 
And assuming this is close. And look at that. 0.183. So let's see. Let's let's measure the springs. These I would be really surprised if they're anywhere near close because they're springs. But let's have a look. Let's have a gander. Alright, with no tension on the spring, looks to be about 2.194. Let's try this one. Looks to be about 2.28. So this one is a little bit longer, but that ain't bad. And that, that pretty much, you know, spells it out right there. As you can see, most of the variances were 0.001, sometimes 0.0001. Very few of them were 0.01, though. They were all very, very close. The things that were farthest from each other are these two springs. And sitting them next to each other, you can barely see with your eyes that this one is a little longer. Barely. Just barely. But these are the only two parts that were really out of size with one another. And they were just barely. So that just is a testament to Swiss craftsmanship. I mean, the whole, the whole rifle is made that way. It's not just the bolt groups. It's the whole gun. You know, as I was telling you in my earlier videos, I haven't touched this rifle at all. Look at the breech face in there that has been like that for a hundred years so anyway this is the first of really a series of videos that I'm gonna be doing there's gonna be a lot more to come um, you know I'm gonna get a video up of the 1911 totally taken apart so you can see the different parts and um, I'm gonna go over one of the biggest mistakes I see people making on YouTube when they're shooting their Swiss rifles, the Swiss rifles intentionally have a very long trigger. You hear it stop right here? Hear that stop? There's a long crawl, and it was made so you could carry it safely. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this at the range or anything like that, but if you're, doing, if you're sitting at the bench trying to do precision shooting, shooting like this is never going to give you accuracy. The rifle is meant to be carried with your finger on the trigger with it pulled back all the way to the stop. And it is safe to do that. It has got a very clean, very distinct break. You know, just pop it a few times and you will definitely, you know, from then on you will know exactly where it's going to break. As a, Each rifle has a very distinct break. But, you know, if you're trying to sh shoot from a bench or shoot from accuracy, don't be doing this number. You hold it right there where the trigger stops and it stops again very distinctly. And when you're ready to fire, boom. So that's pretty much my rant on that. But that'll be on a different video when I have the bolt group in. So you can see that even doing this is not going to let it go. But it's a very easy click. And then it does. But you actually have to pull that trigger. So again, thanks for watching and there will be more videos to come. I'll see you guys later.